Hello everyone, my name is Pixelrifts and welcome back to Empire's SMP. I hope you're all having a good day. We have a bunch of tasks to get done today in the name of the king. That is right. We have a brand new emperor in the server and that is of course Solidarity Gaming. Good old Jimmy is now the king of the entire Empire's SMP. But for how long? <laughs> we don't really know because at any time the crown could be snatched from his head and his head could be snatched along with it and then potentially somebody else is going to take over. Which means we should probably do a little bit of his bidding in the meantime. I've already happily handed over a fortune book to the king on a live stream where he needed it and today we're going to carry out the wish that he proposed at the festival, uh, the festival over in Rivendell, and that was to turn part of our kingdom, part of our empire, into a cod sanctuary. And I have decided that the exploded remains of the Mithland Embassy seems like the perfect place to do this. I didn't really want to get rid of the Mithland Embassy because it was kind of a momentous part of the series, and honestly, I do like Mythical Sausage's build style a lot. So I figured what we could do is, you know how sometimes you have those, like, ruined castles in fish tanks, like there's kind of models that the fish can kind of swim in and out of and it gives them a place to hide and so forth, right? What if we kind of did the opposite and turned this ruined house into a fish tank and so the fish can all like swim around on the inside and everything and I thought that seemed like a fun idea. So I am going to attempt to reconstruct the front half of the Mithland Embassy using glass as best I can, and that way, once we have reproduced it, hello, the skeletons are coming out, it is a little dark out here, I am going to fill the entire thing with cod, and it'll be at the cod sanctuary of Pixandria. Next up, we actually have a task that was given to us here in, oh, nope, that's the invitation to the feast at Rivendell. I didn't end up showing that in my video, so that's not what we want. Uh, I think it might be in the barrel in there. I also have to get rid of this, which was a thing left here by Catherine a little while ago that I never showed on a video, just saying that blocks had been taken from my land for the baby town of empires, and so I will probably need to go and see what that is at some point, but in the meantime, she's dropped off some corn flowers, which is lovely, because I could use some blue dye, to be honest. Gonna put that in the chest with the rest of the flowers, and then finally, yes, I do believe that what we needed to look for in this episode is right here in the house. Another book and quill, better not get these two confused. This one says, Dear Pix, as one of my alliances, I would love it if you could build an embassy at the Cod Empire. I have a small floating slime platform that I would like you to build a small statue of yourself upon from the Codfather. We should we should probably say now from King Jimmy himself, the king. Right, since we've been an ally of the Codfathers for some time, it's kind of cool that he's giving us the opportunity to go and build another statue over there, especially considering what I did with the first statue, so we will probably end up going and doing that a little bit later in the episode. But before we do that, I have a little bit of an update to make to this map because, goodness me, this map was not updated for a long time and the tentacles and stuff that were around my, my empire have now gone. We do have the exploded Mithland Embassy, soon to be Cod Sanctuary over there, and as you have no doubt seen, I might need to walk a little bit further north to get all of this updated. A little bit of work has been done on the anthill. And I say a little bit of work, that is of course a classic British understatement, because working on this terrain has taken a super long time. I've still been doing it bits and pieces of it on streams and off camera here and there, but I've managed to capture it all in the replay mod, and so before we do anything else in this video, it's time for a good old fashioned time lapse.
So that's what happened since the last Empire's episode. Let's go over to Jimmy's place. I think the time has come to put our statue over on the Codfather's land. And hopefully by now a couple of other people will have had a chance to do it as well. Because the only one that I knew was over there was Catherine. So potentially a few other people have had a chance to swoop in and add theirs as well. Oh no. Oh no. I don't think I can show this. <laughs> I don't I don't think it is going to be possible for me to show this. I'm going to have to blur out the top half of the screen. So uh, apologies for all the blurs, but I don't know when a video is going to come out explaining this. So for now, I'm going to have to hop down here, <laughs> try not to look up too much and find a slime pad for myself because most of them right now are a little bit occupied. Now, I'm not sure what Jimmy is going to do about that because it seems like one person has occupied more than one of the slime pads. The only one that remains though is this little one kind of tucked towards the back here. But hey, it's the closest one to Pixandria, so I feel like it should be okay. And I think I have a pretty neat statue design worked out, so we should be able to give this a good old go. And I brought everything I need with me in these boxes, so hopefully that should all be okay. We can start with a little bit of white terracotta, some dark oak, and thankfully I thought ahead of time I brought the stone cutter with me as well, so that we can use some of the copper. Now the middle point of the platform is here, so I guess we're gonna to start like there and this is where we're going to have uh, basically the sandals that are part of my character's skin because I mean if I take the the shoes off and everything I'm basically going for this look plus a trident so that I'm not hovering off the ground We're gonna have some nice thick soles on these sandals I mean you don't want to burn your feet on the sands of the desert do you and let's whip up a crafting table real fast So that I can turn some of the dark oak here into trapdoors It kind of has big dad energy, but it does kind of complete the look to have accurate sandals on this statue We're gonna make a few more trapdoors out of that wood and we'll use the rest for hair and stuff a little bit later on. Got a big old beard on this statue as well, of course. Uh, couldn't have it any other way, really. For the legs here, we're going to make a 2 by 2 of dark oak wood and strip all of the logs so that they look a little bit closer to my trouser texture. I really should have brought some scaffolding with me to do this. But anyway, some grey terracotta could go across the front there and probably a little bit here at the back. But a lot of this is going to be kind of covered by the sandstone that I'm going to use for the jacket anyway. So that's not looking too bad so far. There we go. Behold, my legs. Let's bring all of this stuff up on top of my legs, shall we? So that I can actually continue building the rest of this. Then we're just going to make a big old shirt out of the grey terracotta, or light grey terracotta, I guess this is. We're going to give it some gold buttons down the middle. So one there and one there. And it's going to make me look a little bit like a gold button snowman for a while here. <laughs> That's where the neck comes in. We want a bit of white terracotta for the start of the chest going up into the neck. And on top of this is where my head's going to go. However, in front of that, we are going to start the beard. And so behind this, we need to have a stair kind of facing that way, like so, so that the beard kind of hangs down in front there, and I think that's going to work out pretty well. We'll need some stairs either side, like so. We'll probably put two blocks there, and then in the middle of that we'll have an inverted stair, and that's going to look like a mouth from the front, which I'll show you in a second once I'm done building up the rest of this. This frightening monstrosity at least needs a pair of eyes and a nose, so we're going to tuck those in there. We'll use the light grey terracotta for the nose. Perfect. And so far it looks incredibly weird, but the basics are there at least. Now we've got to add the hair and the jacket and all of the extra stuff and a big copper crown on top of the whole thing, because it wouldn't be the Copper King without a copper crown, would it? We actually need to bring the shirt up one more block here, but I think from here we need to add some cut sandstone in for a collar of sorts and then that's going to trail down either side as part of a jacket and the collar on this jacket is kind of popped so we're going to have that come around the outside like so as well we'll fill these bits in and I think behind here the shirt comes up one and we need another block of dark oak right there we of course need to add a little bit of hair on top here, make sure that the hair comes down and makes contact with the beard on the sides, and then from here it can just kind of fill out the top of the head. I'm actually going to kind of give myself eyebrows up here as well, which will look a little bit better from below than it will from up here. Right now it kind of looks like I'm just cutting my eyes off. Now for one of my favourite parts of this whole build, we're going to work on the crown. The crown is going to have a gold block in the centre, and we're going to come out to either side and use blocks of raw copper 
as accents here. I actually haven't used raw copper all that much aside from the salmon statue initially, but we're going to wax all of this stuff, of course, so it doesn't end up aging. My crown shall last for a little while, at least. <laughs> Apparently in the next Minecraft update, you're going to be able to get four cut copper blocks out of a single block of regular copper, which I have to tell you, I'm pretty excited about. But here's where we're going to put a few more of the trap doors in, just for a little bit of hair texture, because my hair is always a little bit messy, so it kind of makes sense that we've got slabs and trap doors and all kinds of stuff around here. I also want to reach down and put a slab here instead of a plank, just so we end up looking like I've got ears. Having ears is definitely underrated. Let's take a look at what we've got so far, and it's already starting to look a little bit more like me, but the jacket is probably the most important thing. It feels like the trademark of the Copper King at this point, so how about we go ahead and do that? The first step, as always, is to T-pose to assert dominance. But down the front here, we're going to have a bunch of copper blocks. These aren't going to be oxidized copper. They're actually going to be regular colored copper. And that's going to be kind of the, the trim of this jacket, looking very royal and regal. Then up the sides, we're going to do some cut sandstone for the outer lapel of the jacket. Might have given myself a little bit too much length in the shoulders here. We only needed two by two. We're going to turn all of this into weathered copper. We're going to put this here as kind of like a shoulder pad. Dangle a little bit of the lightly oxidized stuff around the outside and of course make sure all of this has been waxed we'll fill in the sides a little bit here as well of course we'll have the back part of the jacket smoothing this out we're gonna do a design on the back and everything then of course he'll need an arm down this side and some white terracotta in there perfect that's the left arm done now for the right arm which is going to be the one holding the trident this one's going to come down by two blocks and then out by a couple of blocks We'll have the cuffs right here, and we'll have a hand holding the trident. Now, the tines of the trident, the kind of fork sections of it, actually look more white than coppery. They look kind of like they're made out of quartz, and so I brought a little bit of quartz over. Should be more than enough to do the job. I never used to use the stone cutter all that much, but since the invention of copper, I think it has become one of my favorite things in the game. So there we go. That's a trident. I'm going to add a little bit more copper to the underside of here, and I'm not going to worry about waxing any of this stuff because if lightning strikes it, then it changes color, and I honestly think that's going to look even more awesome. But that right there is a pretty decent statue of the King of Pixandria. Now, uh, I'm not going to show you what I'm comparing this to, but you'll need to go and check out these episodes for yourself. I'm sure when King Jimmy logs in to check out the statues at his embassy, he is going to be pretty amazed and not just by my one. <laughs> Either way, I'm pretty happy with it. This would be the kind of thing that I do on like Hypixel build battle back in the day. So <laughs> I'm happy with that. That's a nice little statue here at Jimmy's embassy. And I'm going to head back over to sort out what we're doing with this COD sanctuary. So here we are back at the former Mythland Embassy. <laughs> and I say embassy in massive inverted commas, of course. I need to do a little bit of cleanup here, but in the meantime, we can go to a forensic reconstruction tool that I've been using lately that can hopefully help us look at what the Mythland Embassy looked like before it was summarily destroyed. And from there, we'll try and reconstruct the front of it as best we can, because the whole front face of the building has kind of been destroyed destroyed. <laughs> but I think we can probably do a decent job of this, even though we're just going to be working with full blocks of glass. Maybe we can throw in a couple of panes here and there. Let's go to the tape and let's see if we can make an accurate reconstruction. Ah, the Mithland Embassy. <laughs> not exactly my finest hour, was it? Nope. <laughs> Especially not that part. But I think maybe if we pause it duh, duh, here and I think we can rewind the footage. We should hopefully be able to reconstruct the Mithland Embassy as it was, giving us the perfect look at the structure we're trying to reproduce in glass here. There. Perfect. Okay, so this is the template we're going to have to work from. And I'm thinking that this might be a little audacious, but what I might actually do is cover up the areas of the ground that were dirt and grass and stuff before, like the little pathway he built around the outside, I might turn that into glass as well. So it's basically glass all the way up to the front, and this bottom section here, if we can seal off the cave down there, could be part of the Cod Sanctuary as well. Give them a bit of a, a diverse environment that they can play around in. That seems like fun, <laughs> and it's the first time that I've really tried out a build this big using just glass. And obviously we've got a little bit of framework to make sure that we can keep it within the lines, but I think this could turn out looking pretty cool. So I'm just going to get on with this and I'll see you guys on the other side. Well, I am 
absurdly happy with this. <laughs> this this turned out incredible. I think it's almost it's honestly kind of better from the air than it is on the ground because of the transparency of all of the glass blocks, but the structure is there. We can literally walk up to the front door and part of me is kind of tempted to put a TNT minecart in there for the fish to play with, but I honestly don't know if them nudging it into a block would make it explode. So I don't want to I don't want to endanger the cod. They're endangered enough already on this server apparently, but I need to fill this thing with cod now. <laughs> but outside of that, I think it turned out spectacularly well. The ghost of the Mithland embassy has now been transformed into a cod sanctuary and i might even spam some bone meal in here so that we can grow up a bit of seagrass and the cod can feel at home i need to go to the cod empire to grab a couple though and then we can start repopulating this area with cod as was meant to be for the king let's go and get some buckets and let's do this well this place is already looking fabulous we've got a little bit of seagrass down here making the cod feel at home i'm gonna throw in a little bit of kelp bone meal that here and there as well so that they can have something to swim in and nestle around and this place is gonna feel like the perfect paradise for our friends the cod and all i've got to do is release the rest of these into the sanctuary where they will hopefully be safe for the rest of the server and thankfully i had a conduit set up in the river nearby when i was working on reshaping the river a little while ago so i didn't even have to worry about water breathing inside of here which is great and all i gotta do is release these last few cod against the wall like so bucket up all of those buckets together that was everything that i brought over from the ocean be free my friends in safety and security of the new Pixandria Cod Sanctuary. And if you'll excuse me, I'm just going to let myself out the front door. There we go. Replace those two brown glass panes. Let the waters recede. And there it is in all its glory. Look at these cods. Look at these luxurious cod living up their lives in the old Mithland Embassy. I'm so happy with that. I think that came together super well and hopefully our king, the Cod Father, will be happy with it as well. I did want to get the vigil updated for this episode, but I think we are going to save that for next time and hopefully people don't die too much in the process. But folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of Empire's SMP. My name has been Pixelriffs. Please don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.